A quote of his that, that really resonates with me is, um, when, you're, when you are going after your heart's desire, you don't quit. What's, what's your reaction to that quote? And, and what, what's the lesson that we can learn from that quote? Uh, I'll read it again. When you're going uh, after your heart's desire, you do not quit. Well, I think it comes down to this. That, that's, that's having an inspirational goal. Uh, so many people in this world um, either don't have goals or they say they do. The goal is not that meaningful. It's not big enough that inspires them to cause things differently. When you have an inspiring goal, that big dream, that something that you want to do that you don't know how you're going to get there, you will step out and do things that you would have never normally done. That's where it's at. And because of that, because you're so inspired and you're willing to do whatever it takes, you'll get through the times that it's not working. And that's what's going to keep you going, keep you every day pounding, doing whatever you've got to do to get there because you're inspired by something big. And uh, Brian, that's something that my father challenged everybody at seminars online is to come up with a goal that is worthy of them something big, something so big that they don't know how to get there. And because of that, it'll, it'll cause you to, to step into things that you wouldn't have normally done. And it will cause you to be persistent to the point of ridiculous. Um, you know, I like to call it a pleasant obsession. You become so obsessed with achieving something that you, you, you just have a pleasant obsession around it. And you will do whatever it takes day in, day out to get there. But how do we do that when just absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing is going our way? When we were just seeing no results, all the work we're putting in, we're not seeing the views, we're not seeing the money come in. How do we, how do we keep going when it's just not working? Well, that's, that's, that's when we got to have the belief more than anything. Um, and, and that is w when you need to have that inner belief. Um, I will tell you, I, you know, I, I've written this book, My Father Knew the Secret, Growing Up with Bob Proctor. And I have big goals around that book, big goals. And I, wanna, I want this to be all around the world. As, as I'm sure you know, there's not a lot of money to be made in a book. So it's not about the money. It's about getting the message out of who Bob Proctor was and what it can do for you to live a better life. There are times right now included, where I'm nowhere near that goal. I'm nowhere near where I want to be with it. And I don't have a clue, quite frankly, how I'm going to get there. And I could take that and let it defeat me and just say, ah, oh, it's not worth it and give up. Or I can hold this belief. And this is what I've learned through, through my life from my father. You need to hold the belief that you will get there. And when outside circumstances are not showing themselves, that's when you need to hold it more and just have this inner knowing that you're going to get there and keep stepping out and doing it. Because if you quit, of course, you're never going to get there. And you just need to have that inner drive, that inner knowing that you will get there if you keep stepping into it. You know, one of the things uh, dad always told me, he says, whenever you're feeling down or overwhelmed or it's like, you know, the world is against me and I'm not getting to where I'm going. He said to take a piece of paper and write out the five most important goal achieving activities you can possibly do today. That's it. Just write that down and then get in and just start doing it. He said, that'll get you out of a slump. That'll get you out of that, that point quicker than anything else, because it'll get you, it'll get you operating in the present moment focused on where you're going and getting out and doing something rather than sit and let, let the world beat you up. And didn't he have a saying, uh, I think I might get this wrong, but it's like five, um, five steps from gold. Um, or like, um, if you keep on going, you're, you're on the other side of that is, is the gold. I, I might be messing that up, but you had a saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I know, that. you know what, I know what you're talking about. I don't remember the exact quote, but yeah, you're, you're only a few steps away from, from the dream, from the gold, whatever that may be. And it's usually when we're, we're knocking up against that brick wall the hardest that things will reveal themselves if we stay in that belief that we're going to get there. It's, it's when we don't quit. Um, you know, he's such a great example. I'll tell you this, uh, you know, when, when he came out in the movie, The Secret, that movie propelled him to a much larger stage. You know, my father was really a pioneer in the personal development industry. And 
I'm not afraid to say, Brian, he struggled. I, I mean, I witnessed it. In the early days, it was tough to get an audience. I mean, you can imagine back in the days when there was no internet, um, there was no way of communicating to people other than going and knocking on doors. Um, getting people into an audience was really tough, and boy, he struggled. Well, that movie, The Secret, when that came out, that's what propelled him to that to the bigger stage. That's what got him a larger audience. Uh, that's what got him on it. Larry King Live, Ellen DeGeneres, everything that opened him up to a whole new world. Do you know he was 72 years old when that came out? Wow. 72. And he had been working in the business since he was late 20s. Uh, it, you, you want to talk about persistence. He just, he had this inner knowing that he was going to get there. And here was the thing. He was willing to do whatever it took every day because he didn't know what that one thing was going to be. And when he filmed for the movie The Secret, it was one hour of film time. He just had to walk across the street from a hotel he was in, film that for an hour, and then go back. He didn't get paid for it, uh, nothing. He just knew that if he just kept putting the good out there, kept doing his work, kept his eye on the goal, he'd get there somehow. And, and he, just, he just always said that if you keep doing the work, success will come to you in the most unlikely of time, when you don't expect it. Um, but you just have this knowing it's going to happen. I mean, he's, a, he's, he's himself a great example of that. He was 72 years old when that happened. And boy, did things take off after that. I think it's also a good example of this is how usually things happen is that you're, you're down here just going, 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 and then there's that one thing, that one breakthrough, and then that's when it all adds together. That breakthrough adds to, goes to another breakthrough and to another breakthrough. It's almost like the podcast game a little bit too. It's like all it takes sometimes is one guest, one big guest, and then all of a sudden the big guest starts stacking, and that's when there's a, there's a real breakthrough happening. That's it. That's exactly it. You know, Gina, his, his personal assistant, um, she worked with, with my father for years, 30, 35, 36 years, um, just a spectacular lady. When dad was going to be on Larry King Live for the first time, uh, she was with him. And she sa I remember her, her telling me that she said to him, she said, Bob, are you nervous? And dad looked at her and he laughed and he says, I'm not nervous at all. I've been waiting my entire life for this. He just knew that that break was going to come. And when it came, he was ready for it. It wasn't a surprise. It was a pleasant, maybe, surprise, but he was ready for it. So when it happened, it wasn't that big deal because he was, in his mind, he had already gone there. And I also feel like, too, people want that break right away and maybe before they're even ready for it. And that's a great example of how all those years of doing seminars when no one was watching when the eyes were on him, he was prepared to, to be able to handle that. A lot of people like want, want the eyes on them before they're ready for it. And that's, and that's how you destroy your brand reputation. That's how you uh, don't make fans. That's how you lose people.